filming this one again because I forgot to hit record on my audio. <sighs> Hey friend, Brandon here. I think I may have found a really great entry level AMD Ryzen 5 gaming laptop and it only cost me $469, nice. So I really hope this turns out to be halfway decent because that's a great price. You see all this started out because I was hanging out with Enno Bung from Board at Work and we are talking about budget AMD Ryzen laptops. And we found this gem, the 2021 HP 14FQ 1021NR laptop. What an awful name, just rolls off the tongue, just Mm. Now, despite that crazy name, this does have an AMD Ryzen 5 5500U processor in there, and it has a base clock speed of 2.1 gigahertz, and has a max boost of 4 gigahertz. There's six cores and 12 threads, but what's interesting is that this has an integrated AMD Radeon RX Vega 8 built into it that has a 2 gigahertz clock speed and 512 megabytes of memory. It also has 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, so we're going to uh, need to upgrade this. And at that price, I had to buy it. To be honest, I've been using Macs for over a decade because I've been focusing more on content creation and stuff gaming and Macs are just a lot better for that in many ways. But I recently started getting back into PCs because iBuyPower let me borrow one of their gaming PCs and I got hooked on Apex Legends. That led me to buying a Build Redux gaming PC, which if you want me to review the experience of getting a pre-built Build Redux PC, let me know in the comments. But as you know, buying a pre-built is honestly the easiest way to get a spicked out gaming PC with all the shortages and the scalping and everything going Going on. Opening it up and poking around, it just makes me want to get back into upgrading and building PCs. So here we are, upgrading a PC, or laptop at least. <laughs> so while we're here, let's look at the hardware. The keyboard has some really nice travel to it, more than the Apple MacBook Pro, which is kind of hilarious, but to be fair, it doesn't feel sturdy, and that's likely because of all the flexing it can do. That might not be the best thing if you are playing a game on that keyboard and you start raging and just pounding on it. The trackpad is kind of similar. It has a wedge design where the top of the trackpad doesn't depress but the bottom part does. It's pretty spongy, which isn't great, but hey, you know, it's less than $500. Also, if you really are serious about gaming, you probably should have a dedicated keyboard and mouse anyways. It does support a webcam if you happen to need it, but it doesn't have a privacy slider if that matters to you. And this is what the webcam and microphone quality is like. Not all that great. And then here's a photo. And the borders of the display aren't bad on the sides, but the top and bottom bezels are a bit large. I do like that it has a nice matte anti-glare screen, but I do find that the 1080p 60 hertz display to be a bit washed out in terms of its colors. And that likely has to do with the bit depth of six bits, which results in this color banding here. Again, it's a budget laptop, <laughs> but it does surprisingly have a lot of ports, which is really nice. On one side, you have a full size SD card slot and some LEDs. The other side has a headphone jack, a USB BC port, but keep in mind that is not a Thunderbolt compatible port, nor does it accept power delivery. There are also two USB-A ports and a full-size HDMI port, which I love, and is strangely something that is just now being added back to the professional Apple MacBook Pros. What a concept. <laughs> and then finally, a barrel power plug. Unfortunately, there's no Ethernet port, so that isn't the most ideal for gaming if you want to, you know, account for latency and stuff like that, and yeah, it took a while to download a few things on Steam. And the speakers are surprisingly loud but they're not the greatest sounding, it's not all that full, and sounds a bit hollow. And unfortunately, there's a lot of bloatware. There are pop-ups everywhere, and there are bookmarks that are already set in your browser, and they're all asking you to buy or upgrade things. It's just really annoying and tacky. But overall, the build is fine. It's plastic, and the whole thing can flex and squish. It does have a slight wedge design, which makes it a little bit thinner in the hand, but I do wish it had a little more weight on the bottom so you can open it with one hand. But this is a two-hander, boys and girls. Now, seeing as I haven't really used PCs or even built or upgraded some for a while, doing something like this seemed a little bit intimidating because I just felt rusty. But in reality, it was actually really easy to open it up and install the upgrades. So in order to do that, I had an iFixit Tech Toolkit, which had these guitar picks in this wedge butter slicer thing. <laughs> to get into it, there are a few different screws on the bottom, so you'll want to keep track of where they go, and some that are hidden underneath the rubber feet that you'll need to remove with that butter wedger thingy. <laughs> 
Everything else holding it together are just clips, so it's relatively easy to open it up with the guitar picks from the top side and scraping all along the border. When you crack it open, you'll see a few things. There's a 41 watt hour battery. There's some heat pipes there for the processor, which is kind of nice to see. And strangely, a spot for a solid state drive, but you can't actually install anything there because the case itself has all of these bumps and stuff like there, probably to make it more sturdy, but that prevents you from putting a drive there. Instead, it has an M.2 drive with 256 gigabytes of storage. That's far too small. So I decided to upgrade it to this 500 gigabyte SK Hynix 2280 M.2 drive, and I paid $56 for it. But if you play a lot of different games, I would encourage you to go for the one terabyte model because, you know, 500 gigabytes can really fill up fast. And then you'll see a single eight gigabyte stick of RAM. Now, when I was researching things, I found out that the Ryzen 5 processor works best with two sticks of RAM. So I added another eight gigabyte stick of DDR4 3200 RAM for $29. By the way, the links for all these things are in the description if you want to pick them up yourself. So the upgrades are so ridiculously easy to install that even some dude that hasn't built a PC in over a decade can figure it out. But the things I'm not entirely sure about are all the specific specs and speeds that work best with other parts and how to optimize for everything. So, you know, I honestly had to follow some guides for this one, but if you have any ideas of how to make this one even better, let me know in the comments. I say that uh, because I was quite humbled when I was working through this process <laughs> because I forgot to create an image of the stock drive so I can put it onto the new drive. And that was just like a whole pain in the butt. It wouldn't flash the image that I made after the fact and it was just a mess. What a noob. <laughs> so because of that and to get around that, I decided to go for a clean install and forego all the bloatware. So that's the plus side. Yeah, I intentionally totally meant to do that. And I found the drivers to get everything working, but that was a little bit harder to find for the Wi-Fi modem, but uh, I, I linked that down below as well to make it easier for you as well if you decide to do this whole upgrade thing as well. And then finally, I got everything working. So how did it turn out? Well, I tried a number of games at the lowest setting and there were some obvious conclusions. Current flagship games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Control were getting an average of 17 frames per second and Halo Infinite was hitting 24 frames per second for an average. So that's not so great. And I decided that it just wasn't worth it to compare the upgraded performance with the unupgraded performance because if it wasn't so great with the upgrade, it, it's probably gonna be really bad for the unupgraded setup. You know what I mean, I'm not gonna waste your time on that. But things started to look a lot better. When I looked at Apex Legends, it increased the performance from 23 frames per second on the upgraded setup to 40 frames per second average with the upgraded setup. That's a significant increase that made it at least playable, but still, not the most ideal setup. But here is where it really shines. With games like CSGO, it increased from 44 frames per second to 75 frames per second average, which is really great. And you can increase the graphics a little bit and still hit 60 frames per second on average. To be honest, it was actually really quite nice to play on this laptop. So that made me realize something. I think that makes this laptop a really great gaming option on a budget for games like Fortnite, PUBG, Valorant, Minecraft, and other less demanding games. When I think about the fact that I paid $555 altogether with the upgrades and before tax, that isn't a bad price if you're on a budget and want to play these types of games. But if you want to play some more recent flagship games, you're going to unfortunately have to look for a higher spec option and one that's going to cost a lot more. Unlike this video sponsor, NordVPN, which has a great deal going on right now. Honestly, you have to know what NordVPN is by now, but here you are, you're sitting there without a VPN. What are you doing? You need to fix that, especially if you're traveling around for the holidays. With NordVPN, you can easily change your IP address and encrypt your connection so that your data is safe and your browsing is private, especially when you're on a network that you're not usually on, like when you're traveling. If you're traveling to another country or staying at home, you can access region block content by making it look like you're located somewhere else, making it easy to watch your favorite shows or sports games. That's also really helpful if you're investing in crypto and need to make yourself look like you're in another state or country, so you can, by in trade. And in my experience, NordVPN has been the fastest VPN I've used. They have over 5,100 servers across 60 countries with a verified no logs policy. Right now for the holidays, NordVPN is giving you 73% off a two year plan plus one month for free with promo code tech today or by clicking the link in the description. So thanks so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this portion of the video so I can make content like this for you for free. And so I can start saving up and hire more help and pay them a respectful wage, which is really important to me. So what do you think about this pretty inexpensive HP laptop for gaming? Do you have any other suggestions for good gaming laptops in this price range? Are you planning on picking it up? And if you are, are you using the links in the description to buy and hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm? Because if you aren't, go ahead and do that. Help support the channel. And while you're at it, hit subscribe. So let me know what you're doing, what your thoughts are in the comments and in the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. Thanks for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.